Welcome to the Productivity Exchange. My name is Florian and today we're looking at Jira dashboards. One of the best ways for teams to have visibility over their own work is with a Jira dashboard. So today we're looking at making and sharing dashboards. This will rely on information covered in the previous video on search and filters. So if you haven't seen that, go and watch that now. Now onwards with dashboards. Every project my team and I work on gets a dashboard right from the very start. I find that big visual indicators like pie charts work best to allow people to see what they've got and where it is at. They also allow you to spot bottlenecks and oversubscribed team members very quickly and allow you to then drill into particular items as well. Dashboards are also great for project stakeholders. They can get self-serve up to the minute information, though they probably will be using a different dashboard to the team. They are pretty easy to set up, are usually quite well received, with the added bonus that it tends to improve stakeholder relationships because everybody's on the same page. Now before we begin, just a reminder that every work item in Jira is called an issue. So if you hear me referring to something as an issue, it's the work item itself. So let's build and share a simple project dashboard. I quite like having a pie chart that shows what user is assigned to what as well as a pie chart showing the distribution across all of the statuses. This allows me to see if there's a bottleneck in a particular status, as well as if there are any oversubscribed team members. I also like this two dimensional filter because it shows me what status items are in, as well as who is assigned to them. And then say, I just want to see all of the in progress items with Bob. I can just click on the number two and that will open a filter search result with just those items. So I can then navigate to those items and action those. The first thing you'll want to do is go to dashboards and create dashboard. You can either do it here or you can also go to view all dashboards and then click create dashboard in the top corner here. Once you click that, it will ask you to give the dashboard a name. So I will call this BTNG dashboard two because I've already got another one of that same name. So this is number two and I'll just aim to replicate what we've got on the other one. Now that you've set the name, you can also determine who gets access to this. You can edit this later, but it's best to do it now. So you can say private if you just plan to use it yourself, or you can use the drop down and share it with either a particular project or with a particular user group that's been set up or just with the whole organization. Remember to click add before you click save. So add and then save. That way everybody will have access to it. And now you should see a blank dashboard. You can change the layout here. So at the moment we've got it in two columns. Click change layout and you can see that you can either do three columns, one column, two columns, or you can do a 30-70 split like this. I will stick with the two columns because I find that works quite well. Now the next thing you'll want to do is add a gadget. There are a variety of gadgets, but I'm going to stick to pie charts and two dimensional issue filters. You can explore some of these yourself. I thoroughly recommend playing around with these and trying to make them work for you. So to add a gadget, you can either click add new gadget here, or you can click add gadget up here. Now it's not going to load everything in the one go. So you'll need to click load all gadgets and you can see that the selection improves vastly. Now you can either search for pie charts in here or you can scroll through or use these categories. I just search for it, it's quicker. And then I will add just the standard pie chart. And I'm going to add that twice. And you can see that it stacks it one on top of the other on the left hand side. I'll just drag and drop the item over here. And now I've got two blank pie charts. I can set this up to just search for a particular project. So if I search for the project by name, basic training, and then I want to show the next generation project. So I'll choose this one. And then I can choose the statistic that I want. There are a lot to choose from, but for now I'll stick with assignee. And I want this to update every 15 minutes if I happen to have this window open. I'll click save. And there we can see we have a pie chart that shows who is assigned to what. I can also do the same thing over here. I will search for that project again, basic training next gen. And in this one, I will change that to status and just update every 15 minutes and click save. And there we are. I can see everything across all the different statuses as well as who's assigned to what. 
The great thing about these pie charts is that I can click on any of these and see what's assigned to that person. So if I want to see what's assigned to Florian, I can click on that and I can see these six issues. Some of them are in review, one is in progress, and some of them are still to do. I can then also click on each of these and open them up in a new window. I can also see all of the issues by clicking total issues and that will show me all the issues in the project, including the epics that these particular items sit in. Now I don't want the epics returned, but the way that I've set the filter up at the moment, it takes all of the issues that are inside of a project, including the epics. Now there is a way to get around this and that's to use filters. So what we'll need to do is come to filters, advanced issue search, so what I want to do is create a search that shows me all of the items in our next gen project. And then I want to filter it so it just shows the tasks and subtasks, not the epics. There might be other issues types that you want here. You can set them in here. You should be able to just tick and untick them as you need them. And then just click search, save as, and I will call this BTNG dashboard filter two. Now to make sure that other people can see the filter results when they're on the dashboard, I need to make sure that I also share this filter with them. So I need to say details, edit permissions, and then click on the permission group that I want to set. Remember to click add and click save. There we go. Now that I've done that, I can return to my dashboard, which should be in your start list up here, but you can also find it via view all dashboards. And now what I can do is I can configure this particular pie chart to, instead of using the whole project, I wanted to use my BTNG dashboard filter to. It'll still be by assignee. If I click save, that should have gone from 43 to 41. And those are the two epics that we've just removed. I'll do the same thing over here. Click on the three dots, configure, search for my filter and save. And that's also gone from 43 to 41. That way you don't get the epic count polluting the numbers that you see here. Now, the last thing I want to do is add a gadget load all gadgets. And then the one I'm after is the two dimensional issue statistics. These are all in alphabetic order. So I just add the gadget, close, and I want to search for my BTNG dashboard filter two. And then on the X axis, I want the assignee. On the Y axis, I want the status. And the maximum number of results to be displayed is 50. So I'll set that and I click update and save. Now I can either keep that here or I can rearrange it to wherever I want it. Another useful trick, on these dashboards, see this blue line here? You can recolor that to be red or yellow or green or as you need it. This is great for differentiating between different parts of the project. So if you have a pie chart showing phase one and another pie chart showing phase two, then you can visually distinguish between them by using these colors. I want to add one more gadget to this and it'll just be a simple filter results. So I will add this here, filter results. And I will add this at the bottom over here. Now I will need to create a saved filter for this. So what I'll do is I'll go to filters, advanced issue search. And then what I wanted to return is all items in this particular project, same as before. I also want to exclude any epics. So just tasks and subtasks. And then what I want to do is click assignee current user. What that will do, instead of selecting my name or someone's name here, Current user will mean that the dashboard widget will show different results depending on who's looking at the dashboard. So by saving this, I can see that Florian, me, is currently assigned to these items. So I would expect that Bob would get different filter results to me. And I'll just call this BTNG dashboard to current user. I've added this little bit at the end. It's always good practice to name these filters for what they show you. And that just makes them that much easier to find. So I'll go back to my dashboard, to my unfinished filter results here. I'll select the current user and number of results. You can see it says maximum 50. You can change the columns to display. So I will remove the issue type and the key. I do want to see the priority. I want to see that first. And I also want to see the description. There we are. And now I'll make sure that this updates every 15 minutes, click save. And there we go. The description on these is all blank but I do get a, an item here. If I go in here and I add something to the description, and go back to my dashboard and refresh, 
I can see that what I've put in the description I can see here. This is great for visibility if you've got small checklists in your items. And just to reiterate, this will look different for Bob than it does for Florian than it does for any other user. This particular one will show the current user. Now I mentioned earlier it's good practice to name your filters after what they do. Make sure you also name them after something that the user will understand because the filter name will show at the top here. Over here on the two-dimensional filter statistics it shows as well. And you can see the same thing on the pie charts here. This will show the name of the filter that's being used. So if you make sure that that is nice and clear, uh, then it should be that much easier for your users to use. Once you've created a dashboard, as I mentioned earlier, you can see it here in the start list. It automatically stars new dashboards that you create for yourself and you can either unstar them here or you can unstar or star them over at this little star here. They will appear in the same order here as they were starred much the same as these filters. If I click on view all dashboards, I can also find dashboards shared with me by other people. So I could start the default dashboard or unstar that. If you ever need to change the permissions of a dashboard that you've created, you can come to dashboards, view all dashboards, and then select edit and share dashboard. You can change the sharing settings here, you can rename it, and then you can save it. You can also delete unused dashboards or copy them if you want to use them as a template. If you've already got the filter set up that you need for the issues in your new project, then copying an existing dashboard can save you a ton of time. There are two common issues with dashboards. People might not be able to see the dashboard entirely, or they might not be able to see just a part of it. If they can't see the dashboard in its entirety or are given a message that they don't have permission to view it, then the best thing to do is to come here and check that the settings for sharing are correct. Just make sure that it is the correct user group. Make sure you click add and click save. If the issue is part of the dashboard not loading or the individual widgets not loading, then the problem probably lies with the filters. To fix that, go to the relevant filters, click on them, and just make sure that in the details here, the permissions are set properly. If they're not, you can click on edit permissions and make sure again that you've got the right user group selected, click add, and then click save. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to click add before I click save and then run into this issue. All right, and that's pretty much it for Jira dashboards. They're excellent for sharing information with project stakeholders and they're great for the team to work through day to day because it saves them searching through Jira because everything is just all in the one spot already. If you're a project manager, these dashboards can help you identify bottlenecks reasonably quickly, though I would caution against using dashboards for all of your data. You can export data into Excel pretty easily from Jira. There's the Excel add-in that I've done a video on in the past. And probably more importantly, you probably want to get some information directly from your team in the form of a team retrospective. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.